Hello, good uh, morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, U.S. markets for Tuesday's trading session, the 29th of November, 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Singler, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesingler.com or download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's try and uh, decipher the uh, next potential move in U.S. markets, given the fact that we did finally witness some weakness yesterday. Okay, we have the Asian markets more or less down overnight. We have especially the Nikkei, USDJPY certainly um, struggling as well. And really, it's uh, USDJPY that's going to give us the next potential move in this market. And ever since the USDJPY has started to show weakness, the uh, S&P 500 has certainly started to show weakness as well. Okay, so we're certainly into resistance here at this juncture. Okay, on the uh, S&P 500, and therefore expect that to follow through on the S and the on, sorry on the USDJPY. Expect that to follow through on the S&P 500. Okay. Now, in terms of economic data, really Europe at the moment is trading sideways, potentially up with the, with the FTSE down, but the European market's higher on the back of Italian banks rebounding. Whether or not that can last is another question altogether. In terms of uh, economic data for the US, we have GDP today, so again, it's going to be quite volatile. US GDP, personal consumption expenditure, CP, uh, CPC. Okay, so again, that will be in interesting. Red Book, S&P K. Schiller, Mr. Dudley speaking, Consumer Confidence Data, Mr. Powell speaking, Fed Member Powell. And we also have the API data as well. And obviously, we've got OPEC in the background, adding the fact that we've got political concerns in Italy and France. And it certainly does make for one hell of a cocktail. Now, in terms of uh, the uh, technical setup, let's just have a look. Now, my first uh, bias will be to actually, uh, well, I'm currently at present, I'm short the... Uh, the Nasdaq, okay, currently short the Nasdaq, and the reason why is because the uh, there's a potential top in the uh, semiconductors, okay, so we have a potential uh, doji top and semicons. Also, the biotechs are into uh, immense resistance or immense pressure now, given the fact that Theranos certainly has a, uh, a fraud suit against it. So again, uh, its members put forward, and again, it will raise doubts with regards to the biotechs, and therefore, with the biotechs moving south. You are going to see the uh, the actual uh, Nasdaq start to roll over as well. So you certainly have biotechs putting in their bearish engulfing candle. The next potential level certainly seems like it wants to close the gaps below, given the uh, fraud case that's been put forth. In terms of the Nasdaq, let's just quickly bring up the Nasdaq for you. Here we go. <clears throat> so Nasdaq on the 10-minute chart, you have this HNS formation, so therefore bias is bearish. 60-minute chart on the Nasdaq. You have double top here at uh, 4877, certainly has been rejected. And the daily chart certainly remains weak with the uh, topping tail doji. So NASDAQ certainly expecting, uh, uh, should we say, turbulence, okay? And therefore, you are going to see that feed through into the S&P 500 too. Now, the weekly chart certainly still bear bullish, sorry. Uh, although, having said that, as you can see here, the move higher has been led by a decline in volume. That's not exactly a healthy sign, okay? Bear that in mind. Certainly a very negative uh, sign. Okay, also in terms of volume here, you can see it's starting to move lower. Okay, so again, uh, a bearish engulfing candle yesterday, although until it remains above the key 2194, buyer still bullish, so just bear that in mind, uh, something to uh, certainly consider. Okay, in terms of the 60-minute uh, chart, let's just have a look here on the S&P. Now, this is the key chart. This is the one that's very important for me, okay? You certainly have this bullish channel, okay, that we've held since the 14th, okay, uh, and now... We're on the verge of breaking low, okay? And not only are we breaking low, you have support at 2194, which is a daily chart support. So 2194 will be absolutely crucial. And we will need a real fundamental bearish catalyst for us to break through that with uh, convincingly and so that we don't look backwards. And then you are going to see the uh, the selling uh, obviously exacerbate, okay? So uh, again, look for further weakness here, uh, 2194, and then obviously you are looking at 2180 zone or 2182 gap fill. So there are two zones that are going to be coming to play, okay? That's my understanding and my interpretation. Uh, moving on to the 10-minute chart now, you can see that the S&P flushed towards late towards the session. It's a shame I didn't take that short at 2209. Missed out on that, okay? But nevertheless, it's fine, okay? Uh, now, you clearly see that we've broken the key resistance here at 2203 and uh, 2204. So again, no higher highs. We've left an unfilled gap above as well. And this certainly is portraying bearish price action. Certainly is characteristics of bearish price action. Again, you are looking to look, move down to 21.95 on the S&P. That certainly is coming into question now. And then obviously, if the market is bearish, and what, what's basically going to cause the market to be bearish? Uh, an OPEC deal that's failed. Italian and uh, French uh, political uncertainty. Okay. 
and GDP data as well. That's going to be very interesting. Also, the fact that the market has been totally oblivious to risk in terms of uh, US raising rates. Okay, that's another factor as well. So, the commodity market certainly isn't looking very rosy at this current juncture. Okay, if you have an OPEC deal that fails, adding a rate hike that's coming down the line, oil could get absolutely uh, tarnished here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so again, watch out for 2194, 2182 on the downside. That's my understanding and my interpretation. Let's just cross reference that with the Russell 2000, folks. Okay, so this is an important chart, the IWM. Okay, looking at the daily chart, I'll give you an insight here bearish engulfing candle. So it's your first bearish engulfing candle since, it's probably your first red candle since <laughs> the 3rd of November. Okay, that's your first red candle since the third and then also it's increasing volume look at that volume optic okay you've got rs uh, stochastics indicating sell sorry rsi indicating sell let me just add in the stochastics here as well i need to add this in it's good to save it unfortunately okay so again uh, you have a stochastics as a sell signal as well so everything is indicating lower to me okay everything is indicating lower okay and uh, the volume certainly is confirming the move lower yes we did have an increase in uptick in volume here and the low after that really has been sideways to down okay this move really gave it away with the low volume thrust and you've had an increase in volume on the sell side so certainly a lot of conviction on the sell side folks a lot of conviction on the sell side so bear that in mind okay so looking for a follow through now uh, on the downside in terms of the russell you have gaps gaps and gaps galore okay so a lot of gaps to fill underneath a lot of work to do Let's move on to the 60-minute chart of the Russell 2000. Again, same formation here, folks. When the market will continue to make higher highs and higher lows until it no longer makes a higher high, and therefore it will then reverse and flush to the downside, and that's exactly what we're witnessing here. Okay, you're clearly seeing a reversal, a break of the bullish channel, and now looking to move lower with the unfilled gap below. Okay, and that certainly remains the predominant theme. Okay. Right, so Russell weak, S&P 500 showing its hand and it remains weak. Okay, let's look at the Dow now. Let's see exactly where the Dow is. Okay, so a daily chart of the Dow. Okay, so an increase in volume on the sell side. That's not exactly a healthy signal, is it, folks? Okay, so let me just add in my other factors as well. Bear with me. <clears throat> Apologies for this. I do need to um, get this organized ASAP. Okay, I've got that in. I'm using my stochastic as well. So again, I do use indicators to a large extent, although I don't pay that much of attention to them. So when I base my trading decision, it's not just based on one indicator. Okay, it's based on fundamentals first and foremost. So that's where I get my bias. It's then confirmed via technicals, and then I cross-reference it to in order to reduce the noise via intermarket analysis, and then I can use an indicator to confirm the technicals or, or, or basically. Uh, add additional layers of support to my argument or thesis or trade decision via technicals as well okay so rsi obviously overbought stochastics certainly in the overbought territory volume increase in the sell side this is all everything is indicating and pointing lower folks okay uh, anybody suggests otherwise mm, you'd really need to see exactly uh, whether or not you're or not you're looking at this objectively folks or whether it's subjective, whether you're married to a certain position, okay? So certainly looking to, like it wants to move lower, okay? Looking to flush, okay? Uh, so the uh, Dow at the moment remains stubborn, okay? It remains stubborn, but we failed to make a new high, so bear that in mind, okay? 10-minute chart certainly has failed to make a new high and certainly is showing signs of weakness, okay? So bear that in mind. Uh, now, daily chart at the moment, yes, we've had an increase in volume, RSI, and stochastic certainly has remained overbought, although it has been for some time. I'd like to stay neutral on this, okay? I would like to stay neutral because it has shown the the, the uh, immense amount of uh, of strength, okay? So uh, I, I'm very confident on the S&P and the uh, Nasdaq, but the Dow, I'd like to remain neutral, but my bias slightly in indicating lower, okay? Let's just bring up the actual uh, Dow tran Transportation our Index as well. Again, Transportation Index weaker. Uh, daily chart as well, weaker. Uh, the weekly chart. Uh, again is into resistance okay you can see horizontal resistance so it's time certainly for a reversal time to move south okay so that's my understanding so Dow uh, is, is certainly weak okay and indicating weakness now let's do some more research let's move on to the VIX okay the VIX has failed to make a new low okay so VIX now really is primed for a move higher you can see the bearish channel there we've broken out of it we haven't made a new low we've certainly built a base and now we're looking to potentially thrust higher so that's my understanding thus far. Okay, so 
let's just have a look here okay so again we've made a base no higher no lower lows and now looking to move higher okay so that's basically our understanding you have an unfilled gap above that needs to close and that certainly is your potential target okay so again looking to move lower also copper as well this is a chart that i did highlight a few days back i think it was last week you can certainly see that you've put a top in copper a top in copper generally indicates a top in potential or certainly a, a weakness in commodities okay a weakness in equities and therefore you're looking to move lower and that's exactly what's occurring at present and that's what's transpiring okay so again everything anywhere i look at it looks weak okay commodities as well you can see there's a commodities index okay again uh, looking weak has held resistance and now looking to move lower so we've had the rally and now we are looking to stall and starting to move lower us dollar certainly remains well bid certainly remains bullish looks like it wants to move higher emerging markets remain weak as well the yen has finally found support as well let's look at the financials financial sectors has been quite important so the financials are led us higher you can see that we started to get a, an increase uh, in volume on the sell side so bearish engulfing candle on the financials okay so us market is certainly coming into resistance here uh, let's move over to in terms of the us markets let's start looking at the uh, the key sectors so uh, information it really is your uh, major sector so bear with me let's just bring that up for you and you can look at apple as well apple certainly putting in a top in tail showing signs of weakness here okay so again looking like it wants to flush lower apple moves lower than the market moves lower with it as well okay so let's bear that in mind let's keep doing some further research energy sector energy sector again looking at energy sector you see an increase in volume on the sell side and it certainly is looking weak so looking to move move lower you're certainly in the weekly chart you're into resistance so from my understanding really is is majority of the sectors now are showing weakness okay vix is into support okay consumer discretionary as well you can see it's starting to move south here as well uh, metals and mining into resistance you look at the weekly chart you're clearly into resistance so from my understanding you're looking to move south looking to move south very fast bias remains bearish and we are looking for an impressive flush in the market okay that certainly is your uh, potential game plan or my game plan should i say for the uh, for the market today looking for that 2194 if the market continues to be bearish 2182 okay on that note wish you uh, well please be sure to visit cfds.com and take advantage of the bonus goodbye now.